Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. I wanted to talk to you briefly today about just an admonishment to all the saints of God out there that this thing that we have in our homes, some of us, not all of us, some people have it, some people have taken a hammer to it or tossed it out in trash. Uh, years ago, I've, I've actually spoken to believers and saying they've, they've gotten rid of their televisions altogether. I've said it before, I'll say it again, that what we have in our hands, your cell phone, your tablet, your computer, the television, when you turn those screens off, it's a black mirror. And I saw this years ago because there actually used to be an app. called Black Mirror. There might still be, I don't know. I haven't checked, but... And I cracked up when I uh, downloaded it because I was like, what is this about? It was years and years ago. I think like more than four or five years ago. Uh, Maybe more than that now. Yeah, actually, I think it's a little longer than that. Probably seven or or eight years ago. Um, And I downloaded it, and all it did was cut the screen off and I started laughing. I deleted it, of course, as I can do that myself. But you would just look at your reflection in the black mirror. So I, I always kind of kept that in the back of my head. I, I didn't know what that was about at the time. I didn't know what a black mirror was. And then once I realized what a scrying mirror was, because someone talking about it and explaining what it was, and then I realized, oh, my goodness, they've had us doing this forever. You remember Poltergeist with the little girl putting her hands on the screen and it had the snow. Black one television, television used to go off the air. Some of y'all don't know anything about that. Ooh, how old am I? Where these broadcast stations would actually go off the air and they would play the national anthem. And some people have accused that that little end of broadcast imagery that they would put up with the flag. With that end of broadcast notification that the channel was about to go off air. And there were those that say, well, there's writing behind those words when they would put the national anthem, the words for the national anthem there. And if you slow down the video, there were people that claimed you could see that there were words behind those words. Other people come out and argue, no, somebody doctored that and put that in there. Knowing what we know about the demonic beast system that we live in, I'm inclined to believe it's true. Because everything that we've been seeing on this scrying mirror, on the nightly snooze, and other things, all kinds of stuff is completely fabricated, made up. When Donald Trump said it was fake news, he wasn't just, when he said CNN was fake news, that was misdirection. Because it ain't just CNN. It's all of it, including politics. Because while they got you looking left, they doing something on the right. And while they got you looking right, they doing something on the left. And if they got you looking up, they doing something down. And if they got you looking down, they doing something up. It's called misdirection. And witches use that all the time. Magicians, that's that's just a play word. A trick word for a witch. Because that's what they are. That's why a lot of this magic. That you see now. The stuff is like. Oh my. That looks so real. It's because it was real. You were seeing something supernatural. Transpire right in front of you. 
that is a working of one of those fallen entities, demonic spirits, fallen angels, whichever one it is, that's working with that magician who's doing all kinds of rituals to be able to use that witchcraft power in front of the world when they do these demonstrations. So be not deceived. That's, I guess, really what this is about. It's just a quick little notation on how throughout the years we have been deceived by this world. All of us have in varying degrees and in varying ways, whether you fell in love with politics or you fell in love with music or you fell in love with movies or you fell in love with sports. We've been had. Take, for example, sports. Did you know that the Supreme Court issued a ruling that I, I don't remember there was a uh, a lawsuit. I don't remember all the details, the names and all that where someone sued, I believe it was the NFL, regarding the fact that they believed it was fabricated. And the Supreme Court came back and said, it can be fabricated. They can rig these games. They have the right to rig the games. Because on the mice type, on those tickets you receive, all it guarantees is that you're going to see a game played at a particular arena on a certain date at a certain time. They're not guarantee you're going to see a particular player, what that person's performance will or won't be, and they can rig the games. Well, y'all, if they can rig the games, do you think they're not rigging the games? And some of these games, there are millions, if not billions of dollars or more that change hands from the betting and all that stuff between the commercials, the betting, the food that people go out and purchase. It's just, <laughs> it's a highly commercialized event. The Super Bowl or the Superb Owl, O-W-L, whichever way you want to break the word down. All of this stuff that they put in front of us is to distract us, especially believers. The world, they're trying to keep and hold in darkness. But believers, they want you to be ineffectual. They want you to be caught up in this crap that don't mean anything. Watching these dumb movies, these dumb television programs, these concerts. Sports, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the distraction, as long as you're distracted, because that's time you're not praying, you're not engaged in spiritual warfare, you're not speaking against the witchcraft and wickedness of the demonic beast system in the name of Jesus, you're not praying, you're not fasting, all these different things that you're not doing by engaging their entertainment to capture your mind hold you captive and keep you from engaging in spiritual warfare against the beast if you've done that you fell victim to it repent change your mind try to stay focused on king jesus and what he would have you to do with your time in your day. Of course, not 100% of your time is going to be able to be spent on the things of God. But this is the wonderful thing about praying in the spirit. Because you can do that even while you're engaged in other activities. You can be involved in spiritual warfare when you're washing down the deck. Or swimming. Or driving. Or cooking dinner. And that's the beautiful weapon, one of the beautiful weapons the Lord has given us where we can do that. As Paul said, pray without ceasing. Beloved, time is short. No, I don't know the day or the hour. And don't pay attention to anybody that comes along trying to tell you they know when the Lord is returning or the day or the hour. 
they don't. Jesus himself said it. They have no clue. We can discern the times. We know it's about that time, but we don't know the exact day or the exact hour. But the Lord is winding this thing up because these devils aren't even trying to hide their devils anymore. And one of the reasons is the Lord is snatching the covers off of them because there is nothing hid or concealed right now that will not be made known. It is one of the sign, signs of the last days. You see all this stuff that's going on, wars and rumors of wars, that's the sign of the times that he's about to snatch the church out of here. But it's not the end. The Bible says when the end is, beloved. The Bible says when the gospel is preached in all the earth, then shall the end come. You always hear people showing you that all these other things, wars and rumors of wars, nations rising against nation and kingdom of kingdom. But Jesus said the kingdom against kingdom. Jesus said the end is not yet when all these things are happening. He said the end will come when the gospel is preached in all the earth. That's why he gave the great commission, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. Beloved, we are supposed to be about our Father's business. I know to a great degree I'm preaching to the choir. But for those of you who have the Lord has placed upon your heart to get more busy or to get back to his business, to preach the gospel, maybe you can't grab a bullhorn and stand out on the corner. That's not for everybody. But you can pass out tracks. You can leave tracks where you go. You can have them in your pocket or in your purse. Nobody even know you got them. You go into the men's room. You leave them on the counter in the bathroom. You go to a restaurant. You, you wrap the tip money around the track. There's all kinds of things we can be doing. Some are going to plant a seed. Some are going to water. And some are going to reap the harvest. Be encouraged, beloved. Time is winding up. I hear more and more believers talking about this. We we are all getting that sense and that feeling. We don't have much longer here. This is not our home. This is why the Bible admonishes us to love not the world, neither the things of the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Hopefully, If you have fell victim to that, you're falling out of that. That spell is coming off of you. That spell that's been cast to keep you ineffectual is falling off. And you're falling in love with the Father. And the more you fall in love with Him, the less you want to be here. But the more you want to be about your Father's business, seeking and saving that which is lost by leading them to the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope that has been of encouragement to you. Be blessed, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. Amen. Amen.